Hello students, welcome to this session with Stuti Academy. Today I'm going to take you through the topic models. So let's go ahead and understand this word model. What do you mean by this word models? Well, model is a verb. It can be a verb as can, could, shall, should, ought to, will or would and which is used usually with another verb to express the ideas such as the ability or the likelihood or capacity, possibility, suggestion, necessity, permission or obligation. Now models are auxiliary verbs or helping verbs. These help the other verb to form tenses, moods, voices and so on and so forth. Now, as they are helping verbs, they need to help someone or some other verb so they cannot be used. And I repeat, they cannot be used alone. They have to be used along with another verb. So let's see what these models are. Now, what classifies a verb as a model verb? An auxiliary verb should possess dash in order to be deemed as a model verb. Now, here are the options. No inflection. Now, when you talk about no inflection, that means they should not have any suffixes. Now, what do you understand by this word suffix? Suffix means something at the end of the verb or the end of the particular word. It could be any word, okay? That means no S or ES, so no plurals singulars now defective use you cannot use a model verb as participles or infinitives so they will have a finite and you cannot use them as participles auxiliary use now you can only use model verbs as auxiliary verbs in order to modify the main verb like in order to tell something more about the main verb. They are always used along with the principal verb. So the principal verb cannot be used alone. The principal verb and the model verb, they are used together. Okay, main types of model verbs. Now there are different types of model verbs and they express different meanings. Now they denote the ability or Say the capability, words like can or could, then expressing permission, like again, can or may, likelihood, words like will or might, may, can, would, these express likelihood. Then you have obligation. Obligation is something that you are obliged to do. So must and have to. And model verbs like advice, like should. So these are the different meanings that these model verbs express. Now the difference between a model verb and an auxiliary verb. What do you understand by the difference? Now auxiliary verb add grammatical and the functional meaning to a clause that they are used. Okay, so they have of aspect, voice, modality, tense. So for example, if you see the slide, it is, I have read this book so many times. So you're talking about, I have read. Reading is an act action. So it is the principal verb and the model verb is have. So have, now here it is an auxiliary verb. So have is an auxiliary verb, which expect, uh, expresses the perfect as aspect. But the model verb is a part of the auxiliary verb. Like you have the umbrella auxiliary verb and you have the model verb inside it. So model verbs indicate modality in a clause and uh, they express, like I said before, certainty, ability, willingness, permission, necessity, obligation, advice possibility. So let's look at the example on the slide. 
Mary might come tomorrow. Now, we don't know whether she will come for definite or not. She might come tomorrow. Now, might is a model verb because might expresses possibility. Okay, the likelihood of a certain action that needs to happen or that will happen tomorrow. Now, let's look at these model verbs one by one. The first one here we have is can. Now, can is mainly to express the ability, the capability, okay? Or to ask politely for permission or to make a request. Now, if you look at the slides here, I have three examples right in front of you. I can play piano, which means I have the ability to play piano. I can. I'm sure about it. Can I take some cookies in my lunchbox, mom? So what is this can doing here? Can is politely asking for permission. So can I take some cookies? So I'm asking my mother permission. Can I take a, you can take a break from work now. So what is this can doing now? Now this can here is making a request. So I'm telling you can take a break, please. Okay, so this is a request. Now, could. Could is mostly used to ask questions, but in an even more polite way. Okay. It is one step further. So if you look at the examples here, could I go out with my friends to watch a movie? So I'm asking, please, could I go out with my friends tonight? So in a more polite way. We could go rafting in a couple of days. So this is a possibility. We could go rafting in a couple of days, something that will happen in the future. Now, look at this could here. He could play cricket really well when he was younger. Now, what is this could doing? This could is talking about the ability of the past, something that was in the past. So he could play. Once upon a time, he was able to play. He could play. Yeah. So this could is talking about the past ability. Now, the next one here we have is may. May is the most polite verb. Okay. It is the most polite model verb. Additionally, it will also express probability or asking permission. So let's look at these examples here. What are these examples doing? May I go to the seaside with my friends? So I'm asking you a question. May I go to the seaside, please? Okay, it is asking you more politely. Most, I would say, most politely. He may be able to help you. Now here, what this may is doing? He may be able to. So this may is a probability. I still don't know whether he can or cannot. He may be able to. Okay, a probability. There may be heavy rains in the coming week. So again, probability. I don't know yet. I haven't seen the forecast, so I can't say with certainty. But there may be heavy rains in the coming week. Now let's go move on to the might model verb. Might is used to make a suggestion. So something that might happen or something I might suggest you with. So it is also used for possibility and probability. So it is the past form of may. Okay, may if you're talking about now, might is the past form of may. Let's have a quick look at these examples. So these examples are, might I suggest we take a cab? So might I suggest we take a cab? I am suggesting you. Might, I suggest you. She might go home on foot even though it's raining. So what is this might doing here? Now, this might is saying probability or possibility. I don't know, but that is possible that she might go on foot. Okay. Now, the last sentence is, he might not have eaten his dinner last night. So what is this might talking about? This might is talking about the past form of may. So last night, I don't know, he might not have eaten his dinner. So this might is talking about the possibility. Okay, easy to understand?
Yes. Now let's move on to the next one. Now here we have must, must not, mustn't, and may not. Now, although technically, if you look at it, must not, mustn't, or may not are two model verbs, but we feel that one cannot live without the other. They are like a couple together. So we mainly use must to express obligation, something that has to happen, or a certainty, or maybe a necessity. And then again, must not or mustn't are for prohibition or the negative form of must. Now let's have a quick look at these examples here. You must study hard in order to get into a good college. So it is a necessity. You must study hard. Okay. You must carry an umbrella as you umbrella with you as it is raining today. So I am telling you for certain it is raining today. So you must carry an umbrella. Okay. You must not drink and drive. So now this must not is prohibition. I am saying you must not, you must not drink and drive. Okay, it is clearly a prohibition. You mustn't be late to school. Again, this is prohibition. Mustn't and must not. Mustn't is a shorter form of must not. So you mustn't be late to school today. Again, a prohibition, something that you should not do. You may not work on your sister's laptop. Now, may not. Again, this is a probability in a negative way, in the past way. Okay? You may not. You may not use your sister's laptop. Now, the next one. Oh, wow. We have the fill in the blanks. Okay. Now, what we did before, we did must. Uh, we did can and could. And um, what else did we do? Well, let's look at the fill in the blanks. Okay. Dash, I borrow your pencil, please. There dash be a number of people at the airport today. I dash reach the restaurant in five minutes. Dash, I watch the cricket match after I finish my work. The government dash consider increasing the number of schools in this village. Dash, I see you tomorrow again. She dash never eats so much again. You dash train your eyes too much. Now, these are depending on the model verbs we just did, okay, in the previous slides. So can, could, must, may, yeah, mustn't may not now i'm going to give you the answers right now voila here they are okay can i borrow your pencil please so i'm asking you a question in a polite way can i borrow your pencil please there will be a number of people at the airport today so i am telling you there will be something that will happen in the future okay there will be but i know with certainty that they will be I must reach the restaurant in five minutes. So it is something that I have to do. I must reach the restaurant in five minutes. May I watch the cricket match after I finish my homework? So I'm asking you, I'm requesting you very politely. May I watch the cricket match? So it is a question, but in a very polite way. The government might consider increasing the number of schools in this village. So we are talking about probability. We're talking about might. We don't know for certain yet, but we're talking about the probability of it. Could I see you tomorrow again? So I'm asking you a question. So could I see you again? Could is a past form of can. So could I see you tomorrow again? So I'm asking you a question. She will never eat so much again. So she's not going to do that. She will never eat so much again. So this will is about something that will happen tomorrow or in the near future. You mustn't strain your eyes too much. So I'm saying prohibition. You mustn't strain your eyes too much. Strain your eyes 
work on the laptop too much will trouble your eyes. So you mustn't strain your eyes. Let's move on to the next set of model verbs. Should. Now, what do you understand by this word should? Should is mainly used to provide advice, but it also gives you recommendations. And it also tells you about the necessity, to express the necessity of a particular thing. Now, let's look at these sentences here and see how should is used. So, the first one, you should definitely talk to her to clear the understanding. Sorry, misunderstanding. You don't need to clear understandings, do you? So, you should definitely talk to her to clear the misunderstanding. So, I am suggesting you, I am recommending or advising you that you should definitely talk to her. And when I'm saying definitely, I'm talking about a necessity of it as well. You should try that new recipe. So here I'm clearly recommending. You should try that new recipe. It looks interesting. Yeah. So look at this shoots. The right placement of words will change or modify the meaning of the sentence altogether. Yeah. English is a wonderful language. Now let's go ahead. Last should. You should quit excessive drinking excessive alcohol. Now here I'm talking about the necessity. Why? Because it is necessary that I quit. So I am telling you, I'm suggesting, advising you, but at the same time it is a necessity. You should quit drinking excessive alcohol. Now let's look at the next one, ought to. Similar to should, but ought to will tell you what is right. What is the right thing to do? You ought to drive carefully in bad weather. Now, this is the right thing to do. You ought to be careful in bad weather. You ought to switch off the lights when you leave the room. Again, the right thing to do. Switch off the lights, save the electricity. You ought to switch off the lights when you leave the room. We ought to apologize for wrong behavior. Yes, that's the right thing. If I am annoying someone, I ought to apologize. So we ought to apologize for our wrong behavior. Now, what's this next model verb doing? Shall. Shall is seldom used these days. In modern times, we don't use shall much. And it's been taken over by this word will. Let's have a look at this. Now, shall is still used to express decisions about the future or offer or make suggestions so it is used instead of will as i said and now let's look at the examples here you shall not pass now when i'm talking about passing it is not about passing in your examinations it is passing the road or crossing so someone is stopping you and saying you shall not pass i shall be a great footballer one day what am i saying I'm talking about future. I am talking about I shall be a great footballer one day. Okay. So I am saying in future, I am expressing my decision about the future. Shall we go out tonight? It's a question and I am suggesting. So I am suggesting, shall we go out tonight? Shall I carry your bags? So what am I doing here? Again, suggestion and an offer. If you say yes, I will. I'm offering my help. So I'm offering my services. So shall I carry your bags? So again, suggestion, offer. Yeah. Now the next one is will. Will, as I said before, has been, uh, has taken over shall. So will mostly shares the use of shall. So it is similar to shall. So it is used to express orders in a slightly less polite way than would. Okay. So decisions again concerning the future, promises, predictions, suggestions. Okay. Now let's have a quick, and yes, habits. So let's have a quick look at the examples. I will learn to play the guitar. So what am I doing here? Future, 
I am talking about I will learn to play guitar. So I am talking about a future action or a future decision that I am going to take. I will stop drinking alcohol. What am I doing? I am promising you I will stop drinking alcohol. Today I am going to drink but I will stop in the future. Yeah. Most men do that. But yes. It will snow tomorrow. So what is this? This is nothing but pure predictions. It will snow tomorrow. It is a prediction. Will we take the cab back home? I'm suggesting I'm tired. Will we take the cab back home? So it is a suggestion. Will you shut the door? Now it's a question, but again, in an order form. So will you shut the door? Okay, I am asking you and at the same time I'm ordering you. She's strange. She will sit for hours without talking. So what is this? What does this will do here? This will is talking about an habit that the girl has. So people think she's strange because she can sit for hours. So they are predicting that she will sit in the future for hours. And at the same time, they're talking about her habit. Yeah. So different sentences, same word, different meanings. Yes. Next one, would. You use would for conditional sentences. So, but also to express the desire for a certain thing or a wish or maybe an, a request or um, an invitation. So let's have a quick look at the examples here. So if you have a look at the slide, I would go out if I have some free time. So I wish I have some free time so I can go out. I would go out. Okay, again, condition, conditional sentence. I would go out if I have some free time. The next will, would is, I would like to buy a new car. I would like to buy a new car. This is talking about my desire to buy a new car. I would like to buy a new car. Would you like to go out with me tonight? So. I am inviting you or if you say yes, I will make arrangements accordingly. So this would has invitation and a subtle way of saying I can make arrangements. Would you like to go out with me tonight? Would you shut the door, please? So this is a request. There's please. So it is a polite request. So would you shut the door, please? Yeah. The next one is need and need not. Now need and need not are used for necessary actions. Now need is used as both model verb or model auxiliary verb and as a normal verb. So the main use of need is to express the necessity of something or the requirements of something that we need to do. So you, you will generally use need not or needn't for negative you uh, sentences or interrogative sentences now let's have a quick look at the examples here i needn't cook today we are going out to the restaurant tonight so needn't or need not so i am saying i don't have the necessity to cook today so it is needn't or need not do i need to do my homework Oh, do I need to do my homework? So what am I doing? Asking you a question, asking you the necessity. Do I really need to do my homework? Okay. Now you guys must be asking this question to your parents. Huh? Do I need to do the homework? But yes, you do need to do your homework. You needn't swim in cold water. So it is not necessary to swim in cold water. You need to stop our car at the red light. Again, necessity. It is a requirement by law. You need to stop our car at the red traffic lights. He needn't smoke so much. It's really bad for his health. So it is not required. He needn't smoke so much. Okay. Again, negative sentence, needn't or need not. Next one. Oh, fill in the blanks. Now, fill in the blanks will again cover the things that we did uh, past slides. Now, let's see what these are. 
we dash postpone the picnic to next week. You dash report this matter to your boss immediately. He dash smoke so much, it's really bad for his health. You dash listen carefully. Dash you, please, in the bracket, pass me the pancakes. So sometimes you say please, sometimes you don't say, but it means please, it's a request. So dash, you turn that music down. We dash, know the results of our exams next month. What do you think are the correct model verbs here? Think about them and I'm going to give you the answers now. We need not postpone the picnic to next week. So it is not necessary. We can have the picnic right now at this week. So we need not postpone the picnic next week. You should report this matter to your boss. So something is wrong and you should. Okay, it's an obligation. You should report this matter to your boss. He needn't smoke so much. It's really bad for his health. So again, prohibition, not necessary. He needn't smoke so much. You ought to listen carefully. So, ought to. You ought to listen carefully. Would you please pass me the pancakes? So, I'm asking you a question in a polite way. Would you please pass me the pancakes? So, would you pass me the pancakes again is also a polite way of saying. Will you turn that music down? I am asking you a question will you turn that music down yeah we shall know the results of our exams next month so something that will happen in the future we shall know the results of our exams next month yes mm. all right students now let's see what we need to keep in mind few things that you need to keep in mind when you're using the model verbs okay do not use model verbs for things which happen definitely now for example the sun rises in the east you can't use a model verb here this action rising is a complete action in itself so model verbs as i said are helping verbs you don't need a helping verb here this is a definite action this is the truth yeah again it also has a suffix s so rises yeah now if i talk about will rise the sun will rise in the east so i'm talking about a future action but in the singular form if you're talking about plurals and something that will definitely happen or the, an action that is happening like the sun rises in the east that is a complete sentence you don't need a model verb there they have no s's or suffixes in the third person singular like he can play cricket okay he can play cricket is his ability to play cricket singularly as a uh, in the present he can do this activity he plays cricket when you say plays with an egg s that is a suffix you don't need a model verb here that sentence is complete in itself yeah you don't need a helping verb that action is complete questions are formed with without do does or did so when you are using questions usually interrogative sentences have do does uh, did how which so here questions are formed without these interrogative words like can he speak german now i'm asking you a question i don't know whether he can can he speak german so i am saying can i'm asking about his ability right i'm questioning his ability it follows a main verb in its infinitive now when i'm talking about infinitive is an action that is happening and we don't know when it will end so they must read the book so 
I'm saying it is required. They must read the book. Reading is an activity that is happening. But right now, I don't know when their book will finish, when they will complete reading the book. So they must read the book. OK. When you use the past participle, you tell about things which did not happen in the past. For example, you should have told me. Now, you should have told me. The meaning behind the sentence is you didn't tell me something. OK, so. When you use the past participle, you tell about things which did not happen. Telling is an action that did not happen in the past. You did not tell me that. So I'm saying you should have told me, which means you haven't told me you haven't done that action in the past. OK, now let's have a quick look at the long and the contracted forms of modal verbs. Now can is an affirmative and that too in an affirmative and negative form. So the can is a long form. Now, can you have a contracted form for can? Can in itself is a small word. You can't crunch it any further. So mm -mm, no, can is just can. So can is an affirmative with no contracted form. Then in the negative, you have cannot, something that cannot happen. And the contracted form of cannot is can't. So something that can't take place, can't happen. The negative form. Then you have could. Similarly, similar to can, there is no contracted form for could. And then in the negative, you have could not. So it is couldn't. May, no contracted form. May not is the negative form. Again, may is an exception here. So may not also does not have a contracted form. Might. Might also has no contracted form in the affirmative. And for negative, you have might not with no contracted form. So may and might are the two model verbs which do not have contracted forms, neither in the affirmative nor in your negative forms. Then we have ought to. Ought to again does not have any contracted form. We can't do any shorter than for ought to. So ought not to. Oughtn't to. Now when you say oughtn't to, it sounds a little difficult. This is rarely used, but it is used. Okay, ought not to is mostly used in the negative form. Oughtn't to is rarely used, but we can use it. Okay, it is the contracted form. Then we have need. Need again does not have a uh, contracted form for affirmative. And for the negative, need not, it is needn't. So need not, needn't. Yeah? Then we go to shall. Now, if you see the contracted form here, shall has the same pronunciation. But the way we write it, like shall if we say we shall so it will be w-e-v -E with an apostrophe and then we have two l's so it is we shall we shall go to school now the negative form is shall not or shan't shall not or shan't shan't is the contracted form in the negative now should should in the affirmative has a shorter contracted form again the same pronunciation but the way we write it that is important so it is should but with apostrophe and a d in the contracted form so it is we should we should means we w e apostrophe and a d so we should and the next one is should not something that we should not do negative form and the contracted form is shouldn't so we shouldn't go out in the rains or we shouldn't eat too much cheeseburgers oh cheeseburgers so the next one here is will will has a contracted form in the affirmative which again is an apostrophe and l 
Now here, look at the magic of words. Shall has apostrophe and double L and will has apostrophe and double L. But it is the right way of speaking or the right placement of these words. We shall go out tomorrow. Okay. We will go out tomorrow. Again, both have the same contracted forms. So you need to know which one you're using and you need to use the right one. Then we in the negative form is will not and the contracted form is won't. I won't eat vegetables. I won't go out to the party. I I will not read the book. So will not is a negative form, but it has a contracted form. Won't. I will not read the book. I won't read the book. Same meanings, but a contracted form. Would. Now again, D. If you look again here, should and would. The contracted forms in the affirmative are the same. He would go out with me. He would go out with me. So when I'm doing the contracted form, it will be he, H, E, apostrophe, and a D. Go out with me. And the negative of would is would not. And the contracted form of it is wouldn't. I wouldn't steal your pencil. So in the negative, it is I would not steal your pencil. And the contracted form is I wouldn't steal your pencil. Right? Okay. Now let's look at, at how to use the model verbs correctly. Everything in a gist? Model verbs always come first in a verb phrase. Okay? They are helping verbs, but they come first before the principal verb. I can run fast. Running is an activity. Running is a principal verb. And I can. I'm talking about my ability to run very fast. Model verbs are followed by bare infinitives. You should be more careful next time. So I'm talking about being more careful. Should. Okay. You should be more careful next time. I am suggesting you. I'm recommending you. You should be more careful next time. You can't add S, E, D or I, N, G to model verbs. So which means no, no, no suffixes. Natasha must work hard for her exam. So you can't say Natasha, uh, Natasha must. There is no S. Okay. It is in the singular form. Natasha must work hard for her exams. Model verbs in their negative and interrogative like other auxiliaries. I can't drive. So I am talking about negative. So I can't drive. Again, this negative, uh, the contracted form, using it as a interrogative sentence. Can't you drive? I'm asking you a question, but in a negative form. Can't you drive? And here I'm saying I can't drive. Look at the two sentences, negative and interrogative. Interrogative, but in a negative way. Yes? Practice session. Practice one makes one perfect. Okay. So here are a few sentences wherein you have to use the correct model auxiliaries. He dash visit my house today to study for our exam. You dash go for walk to maintain good health. They dash go for holiday because they were discussing about it. I dash get up early to prepare tiffin for my son's picnic. A cobra dash kill a person in one bite. You dash see a doctor as you are badly hurt. Christoph dash fail to deliver the speech. Okay, 
So what do you think are the correct model auxiliaries here? Think about them. So remember one thing, model auxiliaries change the meaning of the sentence. So you have to use the right one to make the sentence have the correct meaning. I'm going to give you the answers now and let's see what the answers are. Here are your answers. He will visit my house today to study for our exam. So I'm talking about something that will happen in the near future. Something that will happen today. He is going to visit. He will visit my house. You must go for a walk to maintain good health. So something that is an obligation that must happen. You must go for a walk to maintain good health. They might go for a holiday because they were discussing about it. So it is a probability. They might go for a holiday. I ought to get up. It is a necessity. I ought to get up early. It is the right thing to do. I ought to get up early to prepare different for my son's picnic. That's exactly what a mom does, doesn't she? She prepares different. Of course, dads also can help and do, you know, your tiffins, lunches, help around in the kitchen. But this I can be a man or a woman, anybody. So I ought to get up early. It is the right thing to do. A cobra can kill a person in one bite. So it is the ability of a cobra to just kill a person in one bite. Look no further. You must see a doctor as you are badly hurt. This is a necessity. You must see a doctor. This is a necessity because you're badly hurt. Your health's not good. Christoph may fail to deliver the speech. So again, a possibility or a probability. Christoph may fail to deliver the speech. So again, a probability. Okay. All right. Now we have come to the end of the session. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go through and read the model verbs, understand them and do the practice sessions. I want you to go ahead and subscribe to Studi Academy, take the full membership so that you will get the facility of the revision notes, the question banks, and you can practice and practice and practice makes one perfect. So if you practice, you go through the revision notes, you can see the presentations again, you will get a clear idea about the subject and there is no looking back. You just move on and progress. So do subscribe to Studi Academy and take a full membership. Thank you.